Hi everyone, I'm Roo, an SDR at Blink in Sydney. I wanted to firstly welcome you all to our first ever Blink APAC event. We are absolutely thrilled to have you join us here today. As we are hosting this event virtually from Sydney, our team would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land and pay our respects to the elders both past and present. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us today and are excited to share lots of exciting updates and insights with you. We have a, chat, a packed agenda for you all today. We'll be starting off with our latest product updates with Ev and Ranga, and then we'll be jumping into our panel session hosted by Joe and Matt. If you have any questions for the Blink team today, feel free to pop them in the Q&A box throughout our session. Our Blink team are on standby to answer any questions that you might have. We'll also have time at the end of our session for a quick Q&A and we'll follow up with you afterwards if needed. Before we get into it, we have a very special guest joining us today who is dialing in from New York and wanted to welcome you all personally. Our Chief at Blink, over to you, Sean. Thanks, Rue. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be joining you all for this event from my uh, slightly blurred out hotel room um, in New York. For those of you that I have not met yet, my name is Sean, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Blink. And I wanna start by saying a huge thank you for you uh, to you for joining us and taking the time to participate today. Whether you're a current Blink customer or brand new to the Blink family, I really hope there's something here for everyone. We are especially honored to have four incredible transport leaders join us for our panel discussion where, we'll be, where they'll be sharing how they have navigated all of the challenges of the last 18 months and what's next inside of their organizations. We'll be lifting the lid on areas of change management, worker shortages, and most importantly, how to retain staff and keep them engaged in times of great change that we currently live in. Um, also today, the team will be sharing tons of exciting product updates and insights with you. But before that, we, um, I have one special announcement that I, that I did wanna make. Over the summer, um, we were very fortunate um, to close a new round of funding in Blink. Um, it was a $20 million round of funding that, that valued the company at just over $100 million um, post money. Now, this is not yet public knowledge. It's actually being announced. Time zones are currently blowing my mind a little bit, so bear with me here. I actually thought this was starting an hour later, how bad my time zones are getting. Um, it's actually being announced on Wednesday at 6 a.m. Pacific time, so that's West Coast US time, which don't even ask me what, what time zone that is wherever you are, wherever I am. But anyway, it's being announced later in the week. Um, so please keep it to yourself now, our little secret. Um, but what's really cool about that round of funding is it's going to be used to accelerate the product roadmap, enable us to grow the team so we can better support you, but better support you. And also obviously to grow the kind of Blink family and bring more customers on board. So we're really, really excited about that funding, which is going to underpin um, the company's growth over the next couple of years. Okay, so that's all from me. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Ranga and Ev, who will take you through our latest product updates. Again, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you and uh, are delighted to have you all with us on this journey. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Sean. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Ranganath, and I'm part of the solutions engineering team here at Blink. It's great to have you with us for our first Blink APAC community event. We've got a lot of uh, exciting product updates to share with you today. Uh, covering multiple areas of the Blink product. So let's get started. So the three things that we'd like to update you on are user status, uh, a new feature that will tell your colleagues when you're away from Blink, a new launch page in the hub on the desktop, and Blink identity, uh, a feature set that includes existing features and three new features that we'll be covering off today. So to start us off, I'd like to hand it over to Ev who will take us through the first two items, which is user status and the hub launch page. Over to you, Ev. Thank you so much, Ranga. Hi, everyone. Lovely to meet you all and see all your faces. I'm Ev, and I am the customer success manager here at Blink. Um, so I'm going to be taking you through the very exciting user status and hub launch page. And just to set the scene a little bit about user status. So we work with multiple, uh, multiple customers across multiple industries, and a lot of their employees have different time zones and different working hours. So because of this, the need to update the user status has been one of our most voted features of all time. 
So now within Blink, you can actually vote, you can actually change your user status. So you can let your colleagues know when you're unavailable and why. And it works with our snooze and our do not disturb feature within Blink as well. So you can update this from any device at any time from anywhere. So really, really easy to use. And I'm really excited to show you how to use it. So with that, we're gonna get into the app and I'm gonna show you how exactly this looks within Blink. Super. So I'm, I'm super aware that there are those of you here who today who may not have actually ever seen Blink. You might be new to the platform. So I wanna just, take this time to introduce you to Blink and, and what it is. So Blink is an employee engagement app and it is designed for frontline workers in mind. So what it does is it, um, it enables you to be able to see all of your communications and to access all of the features that you need to within your own user-friendly app. And what we can see here is we can see on the left hand side, we can see the desktop and we can see on the right hand side, we can see the mobile phone view. So what I want to um, what I want to go through today is just a really brief high level overview of what this looks like and what Blink is. And that for those of you who are brand new and um, we're going to just pop a link to the demo into the chat box now so that if you do want to get further insight, you can see um, you can see a demo within um, you can get a de demo with one of our team members. So really, really briefly, I'm going to give a high level over overview and then we'll get into user status. So to start off with, we've got our um, feed. So the feed is all about communications. So it really enables your team to get the communications that they need um, quickly and to rise above the noise. So everything that they see on the feed is going to be personalized. So for example, from compliance policies to birthdays, they'll get the messages that they need to. Next, we have the hub. So the hub is a really user friendly um, way to actually access all of the integrations and apps that your users need to and um, all from the one user friendly um, environment. So all of the integrations and, um, and assets they, they need to do their daily jobs and excel at their roles. Next, we have the directory. So the directory is um, almost like a phone book for all of your employees within your organization so that you can co contact whoever you need to quickly and seamlessly. And then finally, we have our um, chat function. So the chat function allows you to um, speak to any colleague that you need to really, really quickly. Um, and it has a few surprises thrown in there as well. But for, I know that was high level, so feel free to um, access that demo um, when you need to and access um, the demo link within the chat if you want to get more insight into that. But I want to move over to user status. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to user status and we're going to go to the settings tab. So going into our settings tab within Blink will allow me James Dean, that's who I am for this demo. Um, it's going to allow me to be able to actually change my user status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the cog wheel at the bottom and I am going to set my status to away. Now, what this does is it shows that James, myself, I am on annual leave. It sets my status to away and it and it lets my colleagues know that I am away and who to contact in my absence. So on the left hand, see, hand screen, you can see Lara, my colleague, sees that I'm away, that I'm not contactable until I come back from leave on the 15th. Now, when James returns from his annual leave, he'll be able to pop back into the into his chat. He'll see or into his blink instance, he'll see his status and um, is still set to away. So he'll just click onto the banner there click back from his status is away and he'll be available again. So this also works with our do not disturb function as well. So all I have to do is navigate down to do not disturb, select um, that I don't want to be disturbed, I don't want to be active on Blink. And then uh, Lara can see through when she goes into my profile, she can see the three little Z's to show that James is away from his Blink instance, so he's not active on Blink. So that was user status. 
I want to now pop into our hub launch page. So our second feature here. So the hub launch page, if you're aware of it, when you go to the hub on your desktop, you will be greeted with this big gray space. And what this means is that it, it's just, it's not colorful. There's no content here. And this has been something that's been requested from our customers to say, you know, we'd love if we could get some content there. So that's what we've done. So I'm gonna show you how to do this really, really simple. So if we pop down into the admin portal here on the desktop view, and we're gonna navigate over to the hub. So we're gonna find the piece of content that we want to put on the hub launch page. And for this instance, we're gonna use the user etiquette on Blink. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna click on the three little dots there, and we're gonna to go to make a default page. Really, really simple. When we make that a default, it immediately updates the hub launch page. And you can see that that is there now for our users when they get into the hub. They'll be greeted with this lovely user etiquette guide for Blink. And what's fantastic about this is you can really put any content you need here. You can put marketing campaigns, events, um, you know, FAQs, the list is endless. So you can tailor it to what you want your users to see within your hub. The most exciting thing about both of these features is they're available for you to use right now. So feel free to go in and use them right now. And um, they're they've already launched within Blink um, and you can use them as of today. So with that, I'm going to pop back to Ranga, who's going to take you through our next part of our product features. Perfect. Thanks, Ev. So over the last few months, um, we've been focusing behind the scenes on three key areas of the product. These are content, analytics, and identity. Each one of these covers a range of functionality within the admin portal and all the Blink applications. We'll soon be ready to talk more about the first two things, which is content and analytics. But for today, I'd like to focus on identity. Identity in Blink uh, means many things. Firstly, it means getting your workforce signed up to the platform as quickly and frictionless as possible. Once signed up, make it easy but secure to authenticate those users. Secondly, it's keeping your employees' details and the teams they're in, which basically controls the access they have to the hub and the feed up to date. Now, whether that's done through automated sync with, for example, Active Directory, or whether that, that, that's done uh, manually. The reason why we want to build out great feature sets in these first two areas is because it then opens up the door for the third and exciting area, giving them access to a whole list of third-party systems and applications all securely authenticated through Blink. Giving access to things like payslips, rosters, HR, and online learning without the need for more passwords and also increasing usage and adoption of those tools themselves. These three modules put together make it possible and we're calling this set of features Blink Identity. So what is Blink Identity? It's many existing features like importing users into Blink, syncing from Active Directory or giving access to files and folders in SharePoint through Blink. And today we'd like to introduce three new features. Protecting content in the hub, making bulk updates to users, and the new application marketplace that makes it easier than ever to find a range of single sign-on apps within Blink. So let's get started with protecting content. Now, the more you use the hub in Blink to share items like files, digital forms, pages, shortcuts, et cetera, with your workforce, the more likely it becomes that you might want to share items that are a bit more sensitive. And ideally you want to make sure that those items don't end up in the wrong hands, especially when they're accessed from the mobile, um, because it could be, because the device can be lost or stolen. So this is where the protected content feature comes in. It allows you to make any item within the hub uh, and mark it as protected. So this will require an additional step of authentication before the user can actually access that item. 
So let's have a quick look at how to make an item in the hub uh, protected. So I'm back here in the Blink desktop app on the left and I have the mobile app on the right. So to make an item in the hub protected, all I need to do is go back into the hub in the admin portal, select the item that I wanna make protected. So for this demonstration, I wanna make this holiday request form protected. So to do that, I just click on the three dots, select the new protected content item in the drop down, and that's it. So that is now saved. You can also see that it indicates to the user that this item now is protected. So if I switch back to the mobile app, uh, I've logged in as one of the users, James Dean. And if I go into the hub and find the holiday request form, you'll again notice that it is marked as protected. So I can expect an additional check to be done. Now I'm on an iPhone 10, so it's going to use face ID, but this will, this could very well work with uh, fingerprint recognition or passcodes, depending on what is supported on your device and what you've set up on your device. So if I click on the holiday request form now, it's going to do the magical face ID and take me straight through the form. So I can now go ahead and book my holidays, but I'm not going to do that. So that's how simple it is to make the sensitive items in your hub protected. Now the next item in our uh, Blink identity feature set is uh, making bulk updates to users. And to talk about it, I'd like to hand it back to Ed. Thanks, Ranga. Okay, so the very last thing I want to take you through is bulk updates. So as many of you may know, currently if you want to make bulk updates to users within Blink, administrators have to do this rather manually or they'll have to lean on our Blink team to do so. So the new bulk update feature within Blink allows you now to update 5,000 users at once, which is going to massively reduce the burden of work for admins um, and also just it makes it so much easier for them to bulk update changes that they need to all within blank so i'm going to show you how this actually works so what what we're going to do is you're going to navigate to the user profile within your blink admin portal and you're going to find your export users um, and you're going to go to actions and find export users there and then what you're going to do is you're going to download our new user email or our new user template, which looks like this on my screen here. And to make these changes, what you're going to do is you're going to change everything that you need to within this Excel spreadsheet, and then you're going to re-upload it into Blink. Very seamless. It'll immediately update the changes that you have made to all of your users. And this would include a uh, feature or details such as, you know, name, email address, phone number. Uh, if you're updating bulk line managers or employee IDs, team membership, and then also it allows you to enable and disable users in bulk, as I said, up to 5,000 users. So really, really useful. It'll save admins a lot of time and a lot of energy. And, um, I'm now going to hand it back over to Ranga, who's going to take you through our very exciting application marketplace. Perfect. Now, uh, earlier I mentioned the third and exciting part of Blink Identity, the ability for, uh, for you to use this identity to safely and quickly give access to third party systems. The easiest way to do this is obviously by adding single sign-on apps to your hub that gives your workforce one-tap access to third-party tools like your HR and payroll systems from within Blink. We've been working hard to bring more single sign-on apps to our catalog and, and want to make it easy to discover and set up these apps that are, that are available now, as well as apps that we add in the future. This is why we're launching our new application marketplace inside of the Blink admin portal. So let's now look at what it looks like in the Blink admin portal. And uh, we'll also look at one of the single sign-on apps that we have set up for uh, a customer of ours. So jumping back into the demo. 
So I'm back in the Blink admin portal. And the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the new Blink identity section in the admin portal. This has a combination of existing features such as managing your users and teams. And it now has this new single sign-on tab. This is where I would find the single sign-on apps that have been uh, made available for my organization. Currently, I don't have any, but I can click on this button at the bottom and it's gonna take me straight to the marketplace. You can also get to the marketplace by going to the applications section in the uh, admin portal. So in the marketplace, we, uh, you can see the current list of applications in our catalog. So we've got a broad range of applications from HR and payroll systems to scheduling and operations management systems like Hastis. Uh, I do wanna mention at this point that uh, apart from single sign-on apps, the uh, application marketplace is also gonna give you uh, systems that you can use to integrate with your feed and search. So for instance, Salesforce, you can send notifications to uh, your user's feed or search for items within, within Salesforce. So that's the application marketplace. Now I'd like to show you an example of how uh, the single sign-on works within the Blink Hub. So I'm gonna go back into the mobile app and I'm back in the Hub. And we're now looking at uh, an application here called iTrend. So this is a HR and payroll system that we have recently set up for one of our customers. You can see that it's also protected, which works very well together. So when I click on the uh, iTrend item now, it's gonna do the face ID. And once the authentication is done, it's gonna take me straight into uh, iTrend. I don't need to re-enter uh, any passwords. I don't need to remember any passwords. I can now go ahead and check uh, my pay slips or submit a new expense claim, but uh, I'm not going to do that. So what we have seen is uh, with single sign-on apps, uh, a lot of our customers have seen five times increase in the adoption. Uh, and also within this specific case, significant reduction in the cost of printing our pay slips. Now we will be adding more single sign-on apps soon. So make sure you keep your eye on the marketplace. And if you'd like to set up any of these apps, just uh, hit the contact us button in the marketplace and we'll uh, help you set it up. So that was uh, Blink Identity. We covered three new features that are part of Blink Identity. Protected content is out now, so feel free to check it out. Bulk updates is gonna be out soon. The new application marketplace, including our current single sign-on offering is ready for you to discover now. And this is just the start. Uh, we'll be adding more functionality to the Blink identity over the coming few months. Now, of course, uh, we're also working on a lot of exciting new features across the board uh, from analytics to content moderation and a lot more. Blink's roadmap is almost entirely driven by our customers who can submit their feedback through Blink's, uh, to Blink's product panel or reach out to our amazing uh, customer success team. So we'd love to hear your feedback. Please visit the product panel. You can find the link uh, in the chat. So that's pretty much it for the product updates. Uh, I'm now gonna hand it over to my colleagues, Joe and Matt, for what is gonna be a very insightful panel dis discussion. Over to you, Joe. Awesome, thanks Ranga. And thanks everyone for joining Matt and I today for the second half of our event. Today, we're excited to bring together four impressive leaders for a discussion about some of the challenges facing frontline organizations. And many of you who've joined us today will be able to relate to the struggles that the pandemic has posed. Whether you're in transport, whether you're in healthcare, or maybe you're in construction, no doubt you're contending with issues such as staff shortages, perhaps it's low morale you're dealing with, or maybe it's burnt out employees. And if you've been across social media or the news at all, you'll be familiar with the trending subject of the great resignation that's causing angst amongst employers globally. So here today to talk to us about these very issues, we have Joe Cairns, Chief People and Safety Officer for Bingo Industries. Joe is a senior people and culture professional with over 20 years experience leading the customer service operations and people and culture functions of large organizations. 
Joe holds a degree in organisational behaviour and psychology, is a chartered member of the Australian Human Resources Institute and has extensive experience working across a range of industries. Joe, thanks for joining us. Hi Joe, good to be here. Welcome. Next, we'd like to welcome Shane Wooten from Comfort Del Grow. As General Manager of Information and Innovation, Shane heads a team of system administrators, developers, solutions architects, and help desk staff that support CDC's 4,000 employees across more than 60 sites nationally. He is passionate about providing innovative IT solutions to improve business practices, to enable staff to do more with less effort, and to provide access to data to improve decision making and overall customer experience. Very warm welcome to you, Shane. Thanks for coming down. Good afternoon, all. Also joining us today is Mr. Greg Fitzgerald, Managing Director of Aspland Australia. Aspland is the world leader in tree services, employing over 36,000 staff globally and roughly 1,000 in the ANZ region. As Managing Director, Greg leads the team towards Aspland's vision to be the leading provider of vegetation maintenance and support solutions to utilities, resource companies and government. With an MBA from the University of Wollongong and having spent over a decade in the industry, Greg has extensive experience in operations management, workplace safety, operational excellence and risk assessment. Thanks for coming down, Greg. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And last but certainly not least, we've got Christian Severino, Director Transition for State Transit Authority, New South Wales. Having worked with STA for over 20 years, Christian's got experience in most facets of the organisation, everything from automotive technician through to depot director and everything in between. In 2020, Christian was appointed as Director of Transition and has successfully led the change that's seen thousands of operators and staff move through the privatisation process. Christian, thank you for being here. Thanks, Joe. Hi, everyone. So I guess the common theme across our audience and panel members this afternoon is that we're mostly in frontline organisations. And as we all know, frontline industries face unique challenges, especially when it comes to ensuring high retention levels. And in today's climate where borders have been closed, um, limiting those usual staffing channels, Coupled with the big quit, where we've seen roughly 19 million people resign from jobs globally in just a few months, the threat to these organisations is very real. Joe, we might kick off with you. In your experience in frontline organisations, what do you see are the top contributing factors to staff turnover? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, I mean, we all know, you know, wages and training and, and you know, job opportunities is one of them. But when I really get down to the foundations of what I think really makes a difference, it's you know, whether people actually feel that they have a voice in an organisation and that they feel heard. Um, you know, and that's great for business. It encourages collaboration. It encourages ideas to come to the table from the people that are actually doing the job. But when people feel silenced or that they speak up and they're not heard, I think that's one of the, the big contributors to people leaving regardless of roles. Um, and that, that the organisation cares, for me, that's another really important one. Um, and how do you show care as an organisation? Again, from across the, the group of people that work for you, but also at a very individual and personalised level. Uh, so, so for me, you know, if you don't get those two things right, the other things do matter. But if you get those two things right, you have actually a chance to fix the other things before they actually cause turnover. Um, and probably the third one for me on that is, is just your frontline leadership capability. For me, they're the people from a leadership perspective that have the loudest voice in your organisation. So as an executive, it's my responsibility to set the tone from the top. Set the, you know, make sure our leaders are aligned, drive that clarity and alignment. But at the end of the day, it's that conversation that happens at the frontline leader level. It's the standard that that frontline leader sets. And it's whether they address the issues or not in the moment that really makes the decision for that individual. So yeah, feeling heard and having a voice, people feel that they're being cared for as a human and an individual, and also that um, the frontline leaders and the, the decisions and actions that they take every day. Yeah, got it. Thank you. So I question on that. Do you think that these factors or those three um, areas are unique to frontline industries or do you reckon they're faced by all organisations? Well, I think they're faced by all organisations. Um, 
for me, where in particular that frontline leader piece that's really important, most of the organisations, in fact, all the organisations I've ever worked for are very geographically dispersed, highly mm. mobile, um, you know, workforces. I've got truck drivers and service technicians and maintenance crews out. So we don't have just one job site. You know, we have hundreds and thousands of job sites every day because one of my drivers, if I think about us here at Bingo, could be at five or six different customer sites every day. So, you know, being able to, having those things front and centre, I think is really important when you are working a, a geographically dispersed organisation. Yeah, look, and I think probably everyone in the audience can relate to that with very similar industry and seeing the attendees and who's around. So I appreciate yeah. that. Greg, I guess to add to that, look, Asplund have a big focus on improving culture and increasing engagement, really with a view to reducing turnover and improving safety metrics. For you, what are the biggest hurdles that you face in today's environment and what are you doing to kind of keep staff engaged in that regard? Okay, thanks, Jack. For us, the um, I suppose the engagement process started from a, a safety risk that we're having. We have some world-class systems in place. Everyone's got all the great reporting. We've got... Um, good safe work method statements were ISO accredited, yet we're still having accidents all across Australia. And a lot of those accidents were repeat events where we put out information, we put out training, and then we come up with um, a result where if we had a message went out in Ballarat and another one went out in Cairns, it could be the exact same toolbox talk, but it was two different messages. Um, and the level of engagement from staff, if you talk to them in some areas, they remembered every single part of that talk and what they needed to remember. And others went, yeah, I, I think I was there. Um, and so for us, it became about, well, how do we get them engaged and how do we get that consistent message across? And that's where we actually brought Blink in, to be honest, to make sure we got the one message across every depot across Australia and New Zealand to make sure it's consistent um, and to make sure we can share things really, really quickly. People aren't hearing about anything a week later or two weeks later. They get it that day or the next day when we've had some time to think about it, put in place a, a couple of steps and some reminders and just put out some short, sharp videos as well. Um, and that engagement from that uh, video and photographic evidence and the ability to comment and talk to each other is making a huge difference. And I can now go around to any of my depots and ask people that, what did you think about that message? And typically they all know and they all remember it. And it's very consistent because they got the one thing. Yeah, interesting. No, it's 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 interesting to see that sort of the patterns forming there where where engagement seems to be sort of directly correlated with really working from the best interests of your front line. Um, I know Christian, one of one of the areas that STA successfully focuses on is increasing staff morale through communication and transparency. Uh, this tends to result in lower turnover rates. Uh, how how hard would you say it was to keep people informed and engaged during the pandemic and and, and how did you combat that? Oh, look, we, we were probably lucky with uh, some of the timing of, of, of the pandemic and when we'd actually rolled out Blink. So we'd only rolled it out just before the pandemic had begun. So we, we were ahead of the curve in, in having a way to access our people, uh, no matter whether they, they were at work or um, at home. And I guess 2020 was vastly different to 2021 in what we experienced in, in our area. Um, for, for 2020, we had to maintain a full uh, timetable uh, across the year. So even though there wasn't many people uh, on the public transport network, we, we were contracted to provide full service levels and that meant everyone had to be um, at work and all hands on deck. Um, the challenges, the challenges with that uh, was probably getting key information out to people in real time. Uh, obviously, there was health orders being made, you know, every week, every couple of days, and then there was other um, factors from uh, Transport for New South Wales and other authorities that we had to quickly shift and and push out information on what those restrictions meant and what what procedures needed to be out um, out there for our front line and, and even for the back office. So um, for 2020, it was all about having a, a platform uh, available to get things out quickly. And Blink certainly did that for us. Um, so it was, it was, you know, great that we had that opportunity. Prior to having uh, Blink, we would normally only be able to get information out to staff when they're in the depot. Um, so notice boards, uh, sending out letters, 
putting journal attachments on their daily work schedule and things like that. So having a platform available to push things out of real in real time was certainly um, a bonus for us. And and when we moved into this year, we thought, oh, everything would go back to normal. And it actually, it was totally different. It was turned on its head to the point where we were running um, a, a weekend timetable service during the week and we had up to 500 employees a day sitting at home on standby. Now, the challenge with that is that m most, if not all of those frontline employees that were sitting at home don't have access to our corporate email systems or our IT system. So, again, having another option for them um, through the Blink platform was a, was a game changer for us. So we could continue to communicate with them and we could continue to do some other things that were meaningful. So we were pushing out things like online training packages and and other key information on, on COVID and, and keeping people informed as to what was going on in the workplace and keeping them motivated. So um, for us, our turnover rates actually dropped. So I know many industries have seen, um, you know, huge struggles with with keeping people employed and 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 particularly in service uh, industries. But for us, uh, it, it had the opposite effect. So we went into COVID sitting on about a ten to fifteen percent turnover rate, and that went as low as about two percent. So I think job security was key and. Also, I think the morale of, of many of our frontline workers was boosted because public transport was championed as an essential service uh, through the pandemic. So, you know, it gave a lot of people a sense of purpose and uh, it was a positive overall. I think for many of our frontline people, they felt like they've done something for the community and they certainly did a big job for the city of Sydney. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, by the way, for the for the little plug there, Christian and and Greg. Uh, I suppose if 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 not for COVID, uh, do you think do you think those challenges are still present, or do you think COVID sort of just just brought them to the floor? Did would you say the pandemic caused those challenges, or? Oh, look, we we've had challenges for for many years. Um, it's it's not just COVID. I think there, there's all sorts of things that come come to mind. But um, I think having a, a transparent approach and being able to communicate to your frontline and your staff um, is a, a major issue that many companies face. I think uh, it cuts out the the rumour mill if, if there's a way to quickly communicate and that everyone can see what has been communicated and, and people have opportunities to also chime in on, on some of those communications. So I think having a platform that allows you to do that is is certainly a, a big positive and um, it, it's overcome a lot of challenges for us. Yeah, I can imagine when you're not sort of communicating in the same sort of way that it might create sort of a bit of an us and them type mentality and, and um, I'm sure that's something that a lot of our audience would be able to resonate with today. Look, Shane, I know that communication at CDC, it was something you needed to focus heavily on during the last 18 months. You had LGAs locking down, travel permits being issued and vaccination status requirements, all that needed to be addressed. What, what would you say your biggest success during the last sort of 18 months was and, and where do you think there might have been room for improvement? Yeah, look, I, I think, uh, you know, very similar story to what uh, Christian's already expressed. Um, we, we operate near on 4,000 vehicles uh, across the nation, um, but we've got a heavy presence in Sydney where uh, obviously there was some significant lockdowns as well as Melbourne. Um, and uh, we had um, our staff that were either living in those areas or, or, or coming to work in those areas. Um, and uh, a good uh, vast majority of our services are operating in uh, an area of northwestern Sydney. So uh, we operate under a, a company called Hills Bus there, uh, where we operate nearly 900 buses, have nearly 1,000 employees, most of which, like Christian uh, was saying, don't have access to, to corporate email or an intranet or uh, the like. And, and how do you say to a bus driver, well, you can work from home, just, just work from home. Uh, it, it's hard to drive a bus from, from your lounge room. Uh, so how did we communicate was a real, real challenge for us, particularly as 
uh, the rules and, and the information that was coming out was, was virtually coming out on a day-by-day on -day basis. Um, and, and some of the challenges for us was breaking down the noise, the noise of, of, of media, so mainstream media, and then the noise of social media and, and everything that was coming through that as well, to break it down to our individual drivers as to what does that mean to me as, a, as an employee of, of, um, of CDC? You know, is my job safe? Should I be coming to work? Should I be staying home? I live in an area of concern. But I, my depot is in an area um, not of concern. Can I travel there? Or I, li I live in an area that's not of concern and my depot is an area of concern. Can I do that? Um, and, and what's the requirement in terms of travel permits? Um, what's the requirements in terms of my mandatory testing? And, and we had to break that down in really simple language, uh, understanding that probably 75% of our drivers, um, English is not their first language. Uh, and, and breaking down the the countless press releases and, and, and the like that were coming out on a daily basis into a simple to understand, um, you know, regular updates was really important for, for all of our drivers to, to make them feel like they're engaged, that they've got the information that they need um, and that we could continue to operate um, our business as best we possibly could. It also allowed us to, to um, uh, provide information. We set up a, a COVID vaccine hotlines and, um, and other support hotlines as well, where people could ring directly. They had that information that was available um, to them. And then from there, we, we used the platform to really, I guess, almost gamify and, and create some sort of, um, I guess, uh, challenges amongst our various depots in terms of tracking how their vaccine rates were going and um, create some some in-house um, competition and rivalry in terms of trying to get you know as many uh, of our staff vaccinated at a, at a quicker rate and have bragging rights for those particular depots in terms of um, getting them on board so um, no doubt it's been a very challenging um, period for for a lot of businesses um, a lot of who would be represented here, but certainly having a platform where we could do that, where we could regularly engage and, and, and um, make sure that our, we were keeping touch with our, our staff was, was an incredible thing to be able to have available at our fingertips. Um, do I think that, that the end of this year or next, or even into next year, this is going to just disappear and we'll never have to do this again? I, I don't think it will. I think this is probably going to become a bit of a normal uh, thing for us for, for many, many, many years to come in whatever iteration it happens to take. So uh, I guess we will need to be able to uh, adapt and pivot. I think that's one of those words that's come out of COVID uh, as, as, uh, as the needs, um, needs arise. But um, obviously having the right tool set at your fingertips is, is really important. Uh, and you want to have that before these issues arise. You don't want to have to be implementing something at that point. So uh, I guess that's some of the lessons that we've learned is to prepare for the um, for the unknown because, uh, yeah, it's definitely coming, whatever that unknown happens to be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the point about sort of it's never really quite going to go back to exactly how it was. It's, it's true. And, I mean, it was Aristotle that said that uh, only something only has the, you know, the potential to happen if it's already happened in the past. So we can't go on just expecting this sort of thing to be a one-off event. Now I'm going to throw you the same follow-up question, Shane. Do you reckon the pandemic sort of highlighted challenges or do you think it actually caused a few of them as well? I look, at it certainly highlighted um, areas where we did need to strengthen and areas that we did need to, um, you know, account for. I mean, if, if you'd asked any of us in this room, um, you know, two years ago, hey, you're all going to be told you've got to work from home and it's going to be a requirement and there are going to be police in the street and armies in the street. You know, all of us would have just thought it was a joke, that it was some sort of something out of a, a, a science fiction film. Um, but it, it happened. It was the reality of what we faced. And, and um, you know, I, I think it, it shows very well that you, you've got a plan for the unexpected. You've got to be prepared for that. Um, yes, it, it did it did expose a number of things. It did expose a number of those challenges. Um, but it, as, uh, as Christian said, it also provided a great opportunity um, to celebrate some real great wins along the way. Um, and to, uh, you know, I guess, get some changes in mentality to understand that we can operate a business 
where staff are working from home or from um, you know lockdown areas or the like. So th there certainly was some real wins and and um, things that we could celebrate that came out of it, as well as as um, some challenges and things that we would look to improve. Shane, there was just a question from um, one of the audience participants around you were talking about communication going out to your front line and whether they engaged with that. Did you have any visibility of whether they did engage with that communication? Yeah, we certainly did. So, um, you know, it, certainly there's a lot of opportunity for staff to um, comment and chat on various postings that we were making. Um, we also had a number of mandatory reads that we, we pushed out to staff um, to ensure that they were across what was happening. And then we could follow those up that hadn't done that. Um, uh, we, we engaged in terms of um, uh, some webinars and the like that we also put on so that um, uh, staff could within the app, they could click on a link that would take them to a webinar and they could um, get an update from the CEO and from our senior leadership team. So we could see that that level of engagement of people asking questions online and um, having a response coming to them, you know, almost instantaneously um, gave us a really good feel of, of, of just who was active and who was seeing what was going on. And we, we certainly saw a, a big uptake of um, Blink's usage during the pandemic because uh, staff, I think before the pandemic, kind of saw it as a nice to have, but didn't really see the real benefit. And then once they were, I guess, semi-isolated from us, it became really the only way that they could tap in and, and, and get that sense of um, communications and, and contributing to um, uh, what was going on in the business. So yeah, it, it was it was tremendous to see the, the level of uptake that came as a result of that. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, Joe, I guess, you know, we're talking about what the co what COVID did or the pandemic did affect and what it didn't. Um, one thing that's for sure is that it's affected this staff shortage issue. Um, I guess in terms of what you're facing, there's something we're all facing right now, but how, can you give us a flavour of how it's playing out at Bingo, the staff shortage and, and what the what challenges it posed and what, what kind of repercussions there are? Yeah, so... Um... One of the great things that's happening at Bingo at the moment, and I apologise if you can hear in the background, I'm on site today, but we're in the middle of commissioning a world-class recycling facility out of Eastern Creek. Um, and this is technology that's not seen anywhere else in the world, and it is going to um, increase our ability to recycle products, um, you know, three or fourfold. Um, so we've got a big challenge in the fact that we're, um, we're resourcing up to grow. And, you know, so to try and find operators and drivers, because the more we can recycle at this end, the more throughput we can take in our transfer stations. So it has a flow on a check throughout our entire supply chain. Um, so our ability to, to find people who are qualified or people um, who are unqualified that we can train up is absolutely business critical to us. Um, and at the moment, you know, our ability to, to go live um, operationally with a facility in January is now singularly and wholly dependent on um, resource planning um, and whether or not we can actually get the people in. Um, and that's our frontline teams right up to, um, you know, qualified leaders who can actually lead a facility of this site. So it's, like, it's a big challenge for us at the moment. Um, like some of the other people have alluded to, our turnover slowed down during COVID, um, but we are being prepared to see more people perhaps leave as part of the, um, the great resignation. So, yeah, it's, it's a big challenge for us at the moment, retaining and then also attracting new people to grow. And so I guess off the back of that, so what are the strategies? Can you share some nuggets of wisdom about what you're doing to retain staff or ensure that you are an employer of choice? Yeah, um, not sure they're words of wisdom, but I'll tell you what we're doing. <laughs> One of the areas that we're really focusing on is, is internal training. So um, in my team, I have, you know, responsibility for leadership development as well as technical training. So we've put a huge amount of investment in our technical training team. Um, putting new um, and also new capability models so that we can bring, bring people in unskilled and how we train them through the capability models. Um, and then against that, we've put new REM structures in. So we've significantly overhauled um, both our capability structures and our remuneration models against that in the last few months. Uh, firstly, to retain our existing people. Um, so a massive job in transitioning everybody into those new structures, but then also to try and be a lot more competitive in the market to attract people in. And then we're now also focusing on our leaders. One of the big challenges that we have is because we're so resource poor, a lot of our leaders are people who have 
have grown up through the business. So they ha actually have the technical skills to be able to do the job. So we're constantly finding and actually, you know, walking around plant with a harness on <laughs> about to go and do some technical job. And we actually have to create space for our leaders to lead because they're key as well. If you're bringing people in, we need to build up their experience in the plant, give them the technical training, and then just give them the ongoing coaching and support. So big focus on training, um, giving people some aspirations so they can progress through the model. And then also just making sure our leaders are, um, have actually got the space to lead and the capability to lead. For me, it always just comes back to leadership. It's just so important. And then, you know, we're doing a lot of the nice things around employer choice. We're focusing on wellbeing. We've just launched a big new wellbeing program, focusing absolutely communication and that connection piece that I spoke to uh, before. Um, and then also just doing a lot around online learning and just how we can actually give people some additional benefit, not just for the job that they want today, but the job in the future. So we're definitely doing a lot around that space as well. It certainly sounds like the next few months are going to be a, a really interesting time for you there at uh, Bingo Joe. It's quite exciting by the sounds of it. it, it look, it is. I mean, it's great to be part of an organisation that's growing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a really exciting time for us here. Absolutely. And then it's just um, it's just the start. Once we get this one commissioned, we'll be on to the next one and um, we'll be doing it all over again. <laughs> Never ends. Uh, Greg, Never I ends. know staff retention isn't, a, it's not a new issue for your industry. I know, uh, I'm sure as a lot of our audience will be able to relate to um, Asplen to have a high proportion of subcontractors. Uh, so it is an ongoing challenge. Would you be able to share with us some of the difficulties that you face sort of in that, in that regard and how you've tackled them? Yeah, um, our industry as a whole has a, a lot of subcontractors involved. They're small businesses, two to 10 people, uh, and they've become critical to success. And what we found here probably when I came on board a while ago they were used as a tool. So you pulled them out of your toolbox when you needed them. When you didn't, you put them away. And that's really hard to get buy-in and commitment from that subcontract company. So why would they stay if you had no forward planning? They didn't know what they're going to do next month or next year. They've got to pay for vehicles, payroll, insurances, et cetera. So what we did is we changed, I suppose, the vernacular from people saying, I'm using the subcontractors or them to we. They're us. They're part of our business. They're part of our group. They're part of our family. We've transitioned them into our systems. We use our, our safety systems. They all got blink, um, to be honest, as plug number two. Um, but, you know, and, and those guys um, are quite often the biggest social media posters because they do some really interesting work and put some great photos online. Um, we've opened up, we've got um, some online um, training programs. So we've given them access to those mental health programs. We work with them to see what sort of workload they have next month, the month after next year, and we can give them really long-term plans and we can talk to them about them assisting us in growing as well. If they've got the capacity to grow by one or two people, um, that'll really help us. And if we've got 30 or 40 subcontractors and grow by one or two people, I just gained 80, 100 staff. Um, so we, what we did was just brought them into the family um, and we treat them as an employee um, and we're finding that we're getting really good retention of those subcontractors. They're not leaving us to go elsewhere. And we're finding that we're actually appro um, get, being approached by other contractors in the market nowadays to come across because we can give them that level of, um, I suppose, consistency and a bit of work planning and also a little bit um, more fair in the way they're, they're managed and treated every day. You know, they're all our children, aren't they? Whether they're yours or someone else's, we love them the same. Yeah, I love that you bring them into the family. I don't know about my children sometimes, but yeah, I hear you. I hear what you're doing the business. <laughs> and thanks for plug number two. Listen, I think I, we I could got talk. Plenty more. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We'll record those. Uh, we could talk all day. I've got questions um, that we haven't yet got to, but I am aware of time, and we we wanted to leave a couple of minutes for questions. So we will conclude. Um, massive thanks to you, Joe, Shane, Greg, and Christian for joining and sharing some of those insights. Um, we're really appreciative. So thanks for giving up your time for us today. And we're going to hand back to Ranger and Ev. If you've got some questions from the floor, bring them on. Super. So myself and Ranga have been answering just on the sidelines here and um, some of the questions that have been asked. Um, and there's a few that I want to answer, um, but feel free to pop them in as well. And um, we will um, answer them now on air or we will follow up after. Um, so one question was asked, how do I sign up for a Blink trial? Um, so we're going to pop 
the into the chat box and um, just the demo link and um, our our team can bring you through a demo and um, set you up with the trial. Ranga, do you have any questions from a kind of technical perspective there? Yeah, there is. So there's a question from Sean. Uh, the question is, am I correct in thinking that Blink identity would be used in place of something like Okta or Auth0 or would it work alongside? The answer to that is uh, both. Um, so Blink can act as the identity provider. Uh, for instance, if Okta or Auth0 is cost prohibitive and you're not able to roll it out for all your employees, uh, Blink can certainly act as the identity provider. But if you do have Okta and Auth0 already, uh, we can certainly work alongside that as well. Super. Um, any more questions, feel free to pop them into the panel, um, into the Q&A panel. I know we've got one um, just in relation to Reward Gateway. So um, we've got someone online who has Reward Gateway and they are looking to get into their Blink instance. So we went over the application marketplace. So what you can do is you can actually go into the application marketplace and there is a button beside Reward Gateway and it says contact us. And all you have to do is click that and our team will look after you. Looks like that's the end of the questions, unless anyone else wants to pop them in and we can answer them live. Right. Okay. So that looks like it's um, a wrap. A very big thank you to everyone who joined today. Any questions or follow up, feel free to contact the details in the chat. We hope today was helpful and appreciate any feedback that you have. Thank you again, and we hope to see you again soon.